All right. Hey, guys. What's going on? This is Jason, and I'm here with my son, Jason. Say what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Say what's up, bud. Hi. <laughs> so today, uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to learn how to fly planes using a simulator. And uh, specifically, what I'm really interested in today is uh, learning to do VFR flight planning. And uh, don't mind the loud tripping. Yeah, those aren't our birds, right? Those are those are Kylie's birds. Hey, you want to go put the blanket on top of them so they can they yeah. can they can go to bed? Yeah, it's almost bedtime anyway for them. It's right there. It's right behind there. Yep. So okay, guys. Uh, so here's what's going on. Um, I got I downloaded this sectional chart and I drew out uh, some lines on it. And uh, I'm going to be flying from Henderson Executive Airport, and I'll be flying to Boulder City today. And so I have uh, these four legs, A, B, C, and D, that I drew out. Uh, then what I did is I took this measurement tool here, and I measured the angles. So this one, for example, gives me an angle from 90 degrees, uh, and it gives me an angle of about 40 degrees there. So... Um, I took the angle and the distance in pixels. It tells me it's 266 pixels. I did a conversion using the bottom of the chart gives a, a um, nautical mile reference. So I, I figured out what uh, 10 nautical miles are in pixels and I did a conversion uh, in order to figure out what the distances are. What's that, bud? Oh, it's too tall for you, huh? Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, I can see how that could be a problem. All right, we'll just I'll just kind of toss that up there for you. Okay, so with with the um, the angles and and the distances and nautical miles, um, <clears throat> I took a spreadsheet and I figured out what the magnetic heading was uh, that I needed to fly, <clears throat> and that was the angle that I measured, and then there's this there's this purple dashed line here on the chart and that tells me um, sort of what the the distance is between the magnetic heading um, as you read it and uh, and what the actual true north says so um, I looked at this and saw that there was about a 12 degree difference uh, it says 11.3 here uh, wow I wonder where I was reading 12 from so I put in a, a difference of 12 degrees, and that's how I ended up with the final measurement. So magnetic heading, and then the flight time was really a calculation based off, um, I used my little whiz wheel, and my whiz wheel told me uh, uh, approximately how much time, assuming that I'm flying at 100 miles per hour. So I'm going to try to follow these times and these headings, and the intent is that uh, the map that it draws my flight should actually look uh, very similar. And when I make this final turn, I should be able to land on runway uh, 34 in Boulder City. So we'll see how it goes. Um, please, if you are a pilot, you know about piloting stuff. Please uh, let me know if I've just uh, gone off the rails here. Um, cause I really don't know what I'm doing. I literally, I downloaded a copy of the Cessna 172, uh, checklist and that's what I'm going to be doing here. Uh, so for my pre pilot inspection, pilot tube cover, remove, check, uh, oh, that's not pilot. That's pedo, pedo tube cover, uh, on my plane. It, uh, comes with the pedo tube, uh, cover already off. So I don't need to do that. Uh, pilot's Operating Handbook, that's this. It's available in the airplane, so digitally it is available to me. Airplane Weight and Balance Checked. Um, I did set that up at the very beginning before uh, starting the simulator. My parking brake should be set, so let me go back here and double check. Parking brake is right here, and it is set. And let's see here. Ignition switches off. Uh, control wheel lock remove. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, but the ignition switch is off and the avionics master switch is off. All right, so that's all off. 
All right, back here, the master switch should be turned on. Um, you know what? I think they're doing this for, for um, um, it's asking me to check the fuel quantity indicators. But I think I need to, because I have a Garmin G1000, I need to have the avionics on in order to be able to see what my fuel quantity is. And that's what I set it up at. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's plenty of fuel for this small little trip here. All right. <clears throat> All right, master switch on, fuel quantity indicators check. Left and right are... What's that, bud? Since there's uh, low fuel, I think you should have to the fuel thing. Oh. Check low fuel enunciators uh, are extinguished. So I don't think I have... Let me... There's the low fuel, right? If I do that, see the low fuel right there? Yeah. So it is extinguished. All right. So we can check that off the list. We'll go to uh, <clears throat> avionics master switch on, avionics cooling fan check audibly for operation, avionics master switch off, static pressure alternate source valve on. I have no idea what that is. Um, so I tested the enunciator switch, uh, released it. Okay. Fuel selector valve is set to both. So I'll check the fuel selector valve, and it is set to both. All right. Fuel shutoff valve is on, pushed full in. So fuel shutoff, pushed full in. Let's see here. Flaps extended. So let me. Flaps are extended. Pilot heat on. Carefully check pilot tube is warm to the touch within 30 seconds. Well, I can't really, I can't uh, really test the heat. All right, should, not pilot, pedo. Keep making that mistake. Master switch off. Elevator trim set for takeoff. Let me check my trim. It is set for takeoff. All right. Baggage door. I don't have any baggage or any lock with keys. Autopilot static source opening if installed. Oh, I don't know how to check that. All right. Um, okay, these are things that it that it wants me to check at each location. One, two, three, four, five. You know, I'm not going to be able to check all this stuff. Um, I'm just assuming because, whoop, I'm assuming because it is a uh, simulator that all of these, uh, you know, these things are, are working out appropriately. But let me, let me at least go outside and make sure the lights are on and make sure that everything looks like it's operating. So the lights are there. Okay, that all looks to be correct. All right, there's my... Elevator, aileron, rudder. Okay, that all seems to be working. All right. All right, now, before starting engine, do a pre-flight inspection. Passenger briefing. Hey, you're going to be my passenger, all right, bud? I want you to stay in your uh, seatbelt at all times, okay? You clear? <laughs> all right, this might get bumpy. All right, passenger briefing is complete. Um, yeah, keep your hands to yourself. Don't touch anything. Okay. Don't push any buttons. <laughs> All right. I need you to say yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Brakes test and set. All right. So let me, let me go back into the cabin here. Um, let me see what's the button for brakes. Yeah. There we go. Here's my brakes. Yeah, don't touch anything in the ship. Circuit breakers checked in. All right, I think the circuit breakers are these little things down here. Um, 
I guess if they weren't in, there would be some numbers that were popped out. I don't know how these work. But I assume they're all good because it's a simulator. All right. Um, the avionics switch master switch must be off during engine start to prevent possible damage to avionics. Avionics master switch off. Now, in this case, uh, that's not true because I need this information for the engine and that's for the other style. So, I don't think I need to do that piece. I'll skip over that. Fuel selectors to both. We already checked that. Fuel shutoff valve is on. Check that. Avionic circuit breakers. That's good. Starting the engine. Throttle quarter inch open. Okay. Mixture idle cutoff. Idle cutoff. Hmm. Make sure the propeller area is clear. Master switch to on. Flashing beacon on. Okay, so I have the beacon on. And what else does it say? It's clear. And the master switch is on. Where's the master switch? That's the master switch right there. Okay, so that's all on. Uh, the door's open. I yell clear. Clear prop. Yep, now I will, uh, well, let me start the engine first, and then I'll shut the door. Um, auxiliary fuel pump switch to on. All right, so I'll turn that on. All right. And it says mixture set to full rich. Okay, it's full rich. Auxiliary fuel pump switch to off. I hope I didn't uh, flood it. Hopefully that's not too much. All right. Flashing beacon is on. Master propeller switch on. Wait a minute, I've lost my place. Fuel pump, mixture, fuel pump off. Ignition is start. Mixture advance smoothly to rich when engine starts. Okay. So, let me go back here. Now I start the, all right, clear prop. down here on all these instruments. I'll make that one 
Okay, so I think I have all of my views set up. Two looks at those instruments, zero looks down, five looks straight ahead. Okay, now I feel like I can... This is where we used to live over here, bud. Yeah, now we can see the houses. Yep. So... That's runway 35 left. I think that's what we want to take off from. I'm going to turn down this way.
timer set. Uh, clear. Uh, let me set up my transponder. It should be one two zero. that I talked to the tower and they cleared me for takeoff. Okay? You're good with that? Alright. So here we go. I think that's it. Take it off. Here. Get in front of the flight stick controls. You good? Okay. <clears throat> Alright. Y'all set? Okay, here we go. Looking for 60 miles an hour, then you're gonna rotate.
Yeah, we're at 5,000 feet. As soon as, uh, as soon as we reached 5,000 feet, the autopilot pushed the nose back down. And if we look at our trim wheel, it's trimming our, we our nose down because the airspeed keeps increasing. Slow down the throttle a little bit. Looking for three minutes, 36 seconds. And I'm going to turn on a heading of 98 degrees.
until about 12 and a half minutes, and then we're going to go uh, 3, 4, 3, so we're going to be our new heading. Um, it's going 100 miles an hour. It's pretty fast. When, when we drive in the car, we normally go about half the speed. It just looks like it's really slow because it's far away from the ground. If you were real no real close to the ground, it would look really, really fast. It just looks slow, but it's actually pretty fast.
right there, I see it. Yeah. In fact, I think we... I'm gonna disconnect the autopilot. Pilot, autopilot is disconnected. I'm gonna slow down. See? See this little thing down here, Jason? Where this becomes white? I think that's the range where I'm allowed to put down flaps. So I'm trying to slow the airplane down by uh, bringing the nose up. See how the speed is going down down here? Yep, when it gets to that white, I can put in some flaps. Alright, so now I just put in the first thing of flaps. See at the end of the runway, Jason? I'm pretty, I'm pretty high. See how these are all white? See these lights right here? These four lights? Yeah. So two of them need to be red and two of them need to be white. If they're all white, that means I'm too high. So I'm getting, I'm lowering my nose in my airplane.
the stuff has moved in the country. Like all the stuff on Amazon. There's a vending machine right there. <laughs> yeah. Honey buns and burritos. Okay. So that's it. Um, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna shut off the airplane. And. So now, if I look at the the picture, Jason, what I was trying to do was uh. See this this map here? It goes this way, then this way, then this way, and then around here. Yeah. And that should look like the initial map that I created. It's pretty close. Um, I didn't really have a, a good turning radius here. I just made this spike. But it seemed like uh, the plan got me to where I needed to be. The times were not perfect, um, but they were pretty close. And they got me to where I... I needed to be, so I think I'm going to call that success. Um, anyone out there who knows more about flying planes, please uh, please let me know uh, what I did wrong in gory detail, all the, all the issues. Yeah. All right, talk to you later. Bye.